It's like every other day here in Ngar community. People going about their business like they've always done. But behind these faces are memories of a dark Saturday evening they will never forget. An attack by gunmen that left about 250 people dead. Religion and tribe were not considered on this insane mission to annihilate. It's time for prayers, as Muslim faithfuls gather just like they did on 23rd of June 2018. I felt a wave of apprehension as I heard Ngar got its share of the onslaught right after prayers. I'm taken to the residence of one of the men who witnessed the attack, Imam Abdullahi Abubakar, the chief imam of Ngar, who prevented an increase in the number of casualties. Along with two other men, he saved 200 lives, just like the gunmen, not considering tribe or religion as a criteria for survival. <laughs> We had evening prayers on that day, just as we are about to have now. After prayers, we started hearing gunshots from the village called Exland. Before we knew it, we started hearing gunshots from another community. The gunshots were coming from my village. According to Imam Abdullahi, while everyone sat quiet and prayed for a divine intervention, the gunmen arrived, wearing black face masks. There were many of them. I was in the mosque. From the junction, they started coming towards us, burning houses and shooting people until they got to us. At this point, Imam took a step that changed the course of history for many. People were running towards our village, owing to their thoughts. Seeing this, we had to open the doors of the mosque and my house for all to enter, Muslims and non-Muslims. The 83-year-old Imam Abubakar lives a simple life. A native of Akwiyom in Bauchi State, Imam Abubakar moved to Ungar in 1960, where he started a family. He is a subsistence farmer and spiritual head of the Muslim community in Ungar. There are over five tribes in this village. The houses, the birum, chala, the mangum, yoruba, and ibos. So many tribes, and we all live in peace. So when the attack happened, all he saw were fellow human beings in search of safety and nothing more. Those who managed to get into the mosque were saved and those who ran past were killed. While this room accommodated over 200 men, women and children from Ngar and neighboring communities, outside the mosque, masked gunmen sought entry. Imam Abdullahi wasn't alone. His deputy Imam Abdullahi Umar Hassan was inside along with 200 villagers. We closed all the doors of the mosque. You know the uh, glasses are uh, transparent glass. When those who are in can see those who are outside and those who are outside cannot see those who are in. But we, we are seeing them. They came here saying that the land that there are Christian here in this box, this is what they, we are saying, that we learned that, we learned that there are Christian here in this box. When people entered the box, they started saying this, they started saying this. Then I, I said, no, there is not any Christian here in this box. There is not any Brom man in this box. Trying to open the door, but they did not shoot, but they, we are trying to open the door and enter us. Kill the people that are inside the... How long did this last? 
it, it, when they came here, they, it took about uh, 15 minutes here trying to enter the box. Some attribute the attack to the age-old land tussle between the Birom tribe in Jos and the Fulanis. Others see it as a revenge for cattle rustling. The gunmen left only to return minutes later and tried to gain access to the imam's house where they were convinced people were hiding. We closed the mosque, but we could see them from the inside. Because of the glass, they couldn't see us. I noticed they were walking towards my house. I had to come out, close the mosque, and told them they would have to kill me first before entering my house. I started to struggle with them when I slipped and fell because it was raining. My deputy imam and I were all over the place. When they left, then we heard their voice talking near, near Iman's house. So when I heard them saying they are here for from people, that's why I took risks to when then we left the mosque. I and Imam went to his house and found them. They are gathering, trying to enter Imam's, Imam's house. They gathered at his door, trying to enter. Then, because I, I went to Imam's house two times, the first, the, from the beginning, I went there, I alone found them and then talked to them, what are you doing here? They said that they learned that there are grown people here in this box. They want to enter and kill them in, in the imam's house. Then I told them, how can you enter imam's house? There is no anybody in imam's house. How can you kill people in our, in our imam's house? Our, your, imam is our leader. How can you enter his house without, without taking permission, without being permitted? Imam Abdullah, his younger brother, his wife and two children were killed on that day. Over 60 bodies were recovered from the village another hundred from the bushes from an attack that lasted two hours in Ngar. In this small space, 250 people were buried following that attack on that dark Saturday evening in Ngar community of Barakin Ladi local government area of Plateau State. Anyone would walk past this without realizing what took place here. Never to be seen again but will always be remembered with a prayer on every lip in this community that it never happens again. As normalcy slowly returns, there are empty villages all around, some occupied by herders or few security operatives. Almost two years after, many fear to return home. The killing of my people breaks my heart. These are people I have always lived with peacefully and honestly. When I remember they were killed on that day, it breaks my heart. You can only forget such when you die. As we leave the village, which has never had electricity, two boreholes serving ten communities and no hospital, I couldn't help but see them as sitting ducks for the next attack. When asked if he thinks the gunmen will return, this is what the Imam had to say. This is our land. We cannot remain in fear. If death comes, there is nothing we can do about it. Only God has the power to take our lives. Imam Abdullahi Abubakar, Imam Abdullahi Umar Hassan, and Musa Wada Girado showed extraordinary courage on that bloody Saturday in June 2018. They put their lives on the line to save people unrelated by blood, ethnicity, or religion. I have only cousin. God created everyone for a purpose. So why would you want to take the life of another and incur God's wrath? If that comes for me, I will accept it.
we recognize them this week as extraordinary, brave and exemplary Nigerians who have shown that above religion and ethnicity, humanity comes first. And that's it on this episode of League of Extraordinary Nigerians. I'm Oni Sunday. Thank you so much for watching.